Hello, my name is Becky, and I am the genealogy librarian for the Spokane Public Library. Today I would like to briefly show you how to get started using Ancestry Library Edition. During library closures due to COVID-19, this database is currently available from home with a valid city resident library card. To get started, go to spokanelibrary.org and click on Digital Branch on the green bar. Scroll down to Genealogy Resources and click on that. This will take you to the list of databases the library subscribes to. Select Ancestry.com and it will prompt you to enter your library card and PIN number. Once you have logged in, the home page will appear. To start searching, click on Begin Searching or you can click on the search option on the black menu bar at the top. You can click on Show More Options to help narrow down your search. In the beginning, I recommend unclicking searches for stories and publications and photos and maps, as these can overwhelm and distract from your search. You can go back later and add this information in once you are more comfortable using Ancestry. You can leave family trees, but remember that someone has added this information in and you do not know what their sources are. You can use it as a guide, but don't assume that your family tree is done and correct and there's nothing left to learn. For this search today, I'm going to remove family trees. When you get started, use basic information. First name, middle name, if you know it, last name, birth year. You can guess if you don't know exactly what the birth year was, you can approximate. And where they were born or where they may have lived, as that information can prove helpful later on. We're going to search with the basic option here. We're only doing historical records and we get 187,000 hits. To get a general understanding of your relative, records such as census, birth, marriage, and death are most helpful. It's good to remember that not all records are accurate and adding a few years on either side of the dates will give you better results. So this is when I can start to narrow down my search. Using the search filters here on the left, I can narrow down the birth year from broad to exact or plus minus one, two, five, or 10 years. I recommend using two years as that gives you a broader range and more chance of hitting what you need. When I update my search, I end up with from 187,000 records to 4,000 records. I know for certain that he was born in Missouri, so I'm going to narrow my search to the state and adjacent states and update that record. So now I've gone from 4,000 records to 355 records. While it helps to know the middle initial or middle name, this isn't always correct, so don't discard a result until you have examined the record for further information. I would recommend searching with and without the middle name as you may get different results with each search. Names are tricky things. Middle names are helpful to know as people often went by either their first or middle name. Albert also went by William in several of the census records. If you find a record and everything else matches but the name, record it and work to prove that that person is your ancestor. Are they living somewhere you know they lived and are the children's names all correct? Spelling is also a problem, so use ages as proof. This is where knowing information about your family comes into play. You can narrow down your ancestor with the names of his or her parents, siblings, and spouse. I know the first six records here are the Albert William Norris I am searching for because I know the names of his parents, his wife and children from family knowledge and from my research. As you build your skills and are able to create more detailed searches, or if you know there is a record you are unable to find in the long list of results, you can search specific collections. I know that Albert and his wife were married in about 1871 in Missouri because he is not married in the 1870 census and their first child was born in 1872. When I click on birth, marriage, and death to narrow that down and then click on marriage, none of these records are the Albert Norris I'm looking for. So to get the record I am looking for, I'm going to go back up to search options and I'm going to select birth, marriage, and death. And I'm going to search for Missouri, specifically for marriage and divorce. So by narrowing by category, I can 
search just the databases I want. And because Ancestry has recognized that I've been searching for Missouri, it's given me the option under Featured Data Collections to search for Missouri marriage records. And I'm going to click on that. The information down here, source information, tells you about the record, and that can be helpful if you're not sure what information you're going to get from the record you're looking for. So we're going to type in Albert Norris and married in 1871, approximately. We're going to do Buchanan. Buchanan County. It's going to prompt you here, so I'm going to select that one and hit search. So there are a number of Albert Norrises, but none of them, only one of them is from 1871, the one that I want. And so he married Mary Ross. That's correct. I'm going to click on the record and then I'm going to click on the image of the record so I can view it. Sometimes this information is helpful and gives you more knowledge to go on. This, in this case, the record is fairly basic, but I want to keep this, keep track of this. So to do that, you can either hit save in the upper right corner and you can save to your computer or you can use the tools option, tools option here and go to print or download and that will allow you to save the record. Once you have viewed the record and are ready to go back to your search results, you can click on the back arrow, but if you've looked at more than one record, it may take a while to get back to where you started. Using Ancestry's black arrow will get you back faster. Once you have found a record and you want to record it, I would recommend going to Charts and Forms and using they're, they're pre-written forms to go ahead and enter your family information. You can download the form and often fill it out on, on your computer with Adobe, or you can print it and write in the information you have found. And if you do write it in, I recommend using pencil, as that is a, an easy way to fix any problems you have later on if you discover the information you have is incorrect. If you want to find a record and you're not sure where to look, you can go to New Collections, which is a card catalog and tells gives you the list of all the titles that are new, but also titles that you can filter by dates, by location, and by collection. Or you can type in a keyword. If you're looking for Missouri marriages, you could type that in here. Message boards can be helpful in that they have information someone else has posted, or you could post for information you are searching for. If you are looking for an obituary from a certain county, you can request that information on the county's message board. Some boards are very active and some boards may take a while for a response. A common name might not be as helpful as a rarer one, but there is a search option within the queries. Another way to find information about Ancestry is to use their research aids under learning centers. This includes tips and tricks from their experts, research options, and maps, if that is something that you need to discover. Ancestry Library Edition is a free way to start your research and get to know where you came from.